Hello everybody, this is Virmer, my name is David. Today we're continuing our journey into the world of rubber and we're going to talk about engraving. Also, we talk about stamps, their uses and their difference. If you missed the first video about cutting, be sure to check it out. Rubber engraving can be made to create unique watch straps, jewelry and promotional items. This technology is also used for the art world. For example, in the design of vinyl records with engraved personalized stamps. With a laser engraver, you can cut out and engrave text in very small fonts, logos with small details, and even images on rubber stamps. One of the most common applications for rubber engraving is stamps. There are basically two types of stamps, legal stamps and stamps for art and hobby. Stamps can also be divided into manual and automatic. The presence of an ink pad depends on whether the stamp is filled with ink or not. The automatic ones have an ink pad hidden inside, so the seal is soaked with ink all by itself. All you have to do is press. Wireless machine. Rubber engraving usually is not made of milli machines because the direct mechanical impact doesn't produce an accurate image and the rubber risks to stick to the cutter. We use milli machines for thick materials. The FLTT fiber laser marker can do the engraving, but because of the number of the passes required, the process can last several hours, but the result can be worth it. Using lenses 100x100 or smaller, the detail reaches the highest quality. Write in the comments if you would like a detailed guide to rubber engraving on FLTT. As you can see, this approach is not suitable for mass production of stamps. Just a few products require such extreme detail. So the best solution is using a CO2 laser machine. The most popular models for working rubber are the Watson 0503 and Watson 6040. The process will be fast and clean with high precision detailing. What is the secret? They have a short focus optics and low power tube, so you can get a very small spot and achieve high quality. Watson lasers take rubber processing to a new level, environmentally friendly and economical. Automated precision minimizes the risk of waste, but having a laser machine is only part of the story. Let's take a closer look at what can help you get the best results. In rubber engraving, 90% of the success lies in the correct preparation of the layout. Rubber is a homogeneous material without fibers. However, from the experience of our engineers, we can say that when engraving in two different directions, the result is far from ideal. Okay, let's talk about the layout preparation steps. Once you have prepared the main image for printing, there are four steps for achieving the desired result. First, check the inversion. Make sure you press the button invert or you will get a completely wrong print. Two, flip the image vertically. The mirror function mirrors the layout so the resulting image appears correctly on the paper. Otherwise, the print will be reversed. Third, make sure that the air blower is switched on. This feature prevents your lenses from becoming coated with dirt and overheating. Fourth, check the depth settings. To prevent the link smudging on the engraved part and residue on the material, make sure the engraved depth is greater than half the thickness of the router. Your layout is now finished. An interesting case happened to us. One of our customers was engraving fully amid tubing. We ran tests on customers' material chose the right settings and everything turned out fine. However, when the customer wanted to change the color of the rubber, he found out that the settings he had already used were not suitable. Each color needed different settings. This is exactly what happens with rubber. You need to remember that rubber comes in different colors, gray, blue, red and black. Therefore, if you engrave on gray rubber, it's not a given that you will get the same good result on red rubber. We used a Watson 6090 to make the stamp. 
The working area of this machine is more than enough for various projects and mass production of stamps. The 90 watts tube is quite powerful for engraving. However, we wanted to demonstrate that even such a vantage with the right settings will give you an excellent result. Well, this is our finished stamp. What do you think? Write in the comments. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the next video. My name is David, this is Birmer, see you next time.